oil life indicators. Can you trust them? Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek, and the oil life indicator on this Cadillac says it's at 9%. So let's pop the hood, take an oil sample for analysis, and find out. But before we get to that, how does an oil life monitoring system even work? Is there a sensor that's testing the oil? No, there's not. But there is an intelligent algorithm that was originally developed back in the 80s by three engineers at GM that can accurately predict oil life. Here's how it works. And if you're wondering why I'm sitting in the car, there's a reason for that. See, those three engineers from General Motors, their names were Don Smolensky, Paul Harvath, and Shirley Schwartz. And they used the OnStar system that was originally in the Cadillacs and Corvettes back in the 80s to gather the data they needed to generate that algorithm that could accurately predict oil life. How cool is that? They used that OnStar system to extract engine information. You see, in a modern vehicle that has a ECU, a computer to control the engine, that computer has data. It knows every engine cycle. It knows every time a fuel injector fires. It knows things like water temperature. And from that water temperature, it can calculate what the oil temperature is. And based on those inputs, Don Smolensky, Shirley Schwartz, and Paul Harvath were able to develop an algorithm that could predict oil life because there's a thing called the oil to fuel ratio. Essentially, every time that injector fires, it's putting a little bit of fuel into the oil. Without getting into all the technical details of fuel distillation curves and blow by and things like that, the bottom line is this. The more fuel you put through the engine, the shorter the oil life is gonna be. That same base oil that can maybe go 10,000 miles or so in a passenger car application before it gets too dirty and contaminated can go 100,000 miles in a gear oil or transmission fluid. How's that possible? It's because there's not that contamination. That oil to fuel ratio is a way of predicting how much contamination is getting into the engine oil that shortens the life of the engine oil. Now, there are some other factors involved as well. This is why this is an intelligent algorithm. It's not just engine cycles. There's a debit and credit system associated with each engine cycle. Because at very low temperature, what's going to happen is you're making moisture. You're making water in every single combustion event. Water is a byproduct of combustion. Now, when the engine's up to temperature, that water gets evaporated out of the oil system. But at low temperatures, that water can condense and create water contamination that can deactivate the ZDP. It can cause rust. It can cause all kinds of bad things. So at low engine temperatures, the engine life is being debited at a higher rate because of that low temperature operation. Back to Shirley Schwartz. Her nickname was Sister Sludge, by the way. And her famous saying, in the tribology community at least, was that she could make anyone's oil fail in less than 3,000 miles. All she had to do was put it in her grandmother's car who lived in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Every day, she would drive one mile to Mass and then one mile to Market in the afternoon. So twice a day, she would make these super short trips. And of course, in that Wisconsin winter condition, guess what? That oil would never get up to temperature. So it would be fully contaminated in a very short amount of time because of all the fuel dilution and water buildup from that low temperature operation. Inversely, when you run it, high engine temperatures. You see, every 18 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius for the rest of the world. Come on, America, we got to get on the metric system at some point. But for every 18 degree Fahrenheit increase in oil temperature, the oxidation rate doubles. Of course, oxidation is a chemical degradation of the oil. You don't want oxidation. So the higher your oil temperature is, the more rapidly it's oxidizing, the shorter the oil life is going to be. So this intelligent algorithm that GM created is using temperature data as well as engine revolution data, oil fuel ratio. It's factoring all that in. Then it adds in a couple of fail safes. It won't let you go more than 7,500 miles. Even though the oil might still be good, it's going to say, hey, we don't want you to run out. Once your oil is dead, 
that's not good for engine life. It's not good for anything. So they don't want you to run out of gas, if you will, by going to zero and it being zero. The GM oil life sensor is going to basically tell you to change your oil at least once a year, regardless of mileage. But it's also going to make sure that you don't go too far with the oil. With all that being established, let's take that sample and find out what the lab results say. So one other thing, not every vehicle actually comes with an oil life monitoring system. Obviously a Cadillac and every other GM car does. They've had it since the 80s. But while Ford and Honda also have a version of the oil life monitoring system, my daughter's Toyota doesn't, Nissan doesn't, Subarus don't. So not every vehicle has this technology. Those other makes of cars just have a maintenance minder. It's just an odometer that says, oh, it's time to get your oil changed, whether it needs it or not. Okay, now it's time to pop that hood, take that oil sample, and let's find out how accurate that oil life indicator is. And here are those results and they're good. Being that this is a rental car, I have no idea how many miles are on the oil. The odometer says it's 46,000. The oil life indicator says it's 9%. It's gonna be somewhere in that 5,000 to 6,000 range, maybe a little bit more. But let's go ahead and see what these results say, and then we'll add in an estimated mileage to see what that wear rate per 1,000 miles looks like. The first thing we see is the viscosity is right in spec for that Dexos 1 5W30 that it called for on the oil cap. So our viscosity is right in line and our oxidation value is 13.2. This is the key piece of information. It's very conservative. Even though it says only 9% oil life left, at 13.2 oxidation value for a Dexos oil, we're not even close to the end of life yet. So this is proof right here that the oil life indicator is being conservative. When it goes to zero, it's not running you out of gas. It's not gonna be having the oil be completely dead because they realize that, that just like most drivers, what happens when you get to E? You know there's a little bit of gas left so you can keep on driving. Oil life being zero means there's a little bit left in the tank. That way you don't overextend the oil drain by accident. Now, I'm not saying you should go over the oil life indicator. I'm just saying that this tells you accurately how far you can go safely. Fuel dilution, less than 1%. That's excellent. Silicon, 21 parts per million. Interestingly enough, when we took that sample, there was a lot of dust and sand there under the hood. So this 21 parts per million silicon, that's not surprising. Now, let's look at that additive package. And this is just what we saw from the making motor oil video. This fits that profile of what a API SP GM Dexos 1 Gen 3 oil looks like. That calcium level, the magnesium, the zinc, the phosphorus, the mod, the boron. This fits that profile spot on. So we know that they're using the right kind of oil. Now let's go look at those wear results. Everything is single digits. It's perfect. We said before, we don't really know what the mileage is. Let's just go ahead and throw in, say, 6,000 miles, and let's see what that wear rate per 1,000 miles calculates out to. So at 2.7 parts per million per 1,000 miles, this is excellent. It's well below our target of five parts per million or less. So guess what? As an oil analyst, I can tell you, if you have a GM car or truck with this oil life indicator, you don't even need used oil analysis to figure out how far you should go on your oil change interval. Now, obviously it can't tell you what your wear rate per 1,000 miles is, but if you're not really worried about that, you don't even need used oil analysis. And I'm a used oil analyst telling you that. I think this is conclusive proof that you can trust the oil life indicator to tell you when it's time to do your oil change. So I hope you enjoyed the video. For more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and check out one of these.